Our next topic is nodal analysis. In electronics, nodal analysis has small twist to it, so please pay attention to our discussion. As nodal analysis is a very powerful tool, it always works for all kinds of circuits. The basic idea of nodal analysis is that we sum the currents at every node to solve for the nodal voltages, basically using KCL. So let us illustrate nodal analysis using example. In this example, we have a circuit as shown here. This circuit has two supply voltages, positive 5 volts at the top, negative 5 volts at the bottom. Also, it has a ground node. Note that the circuit looks a little bit different than circuits that we used to see in a classical circuit courses. This is electronic drawing kind of circuit. Because I don't know the currents and the voltages across every resistor, then I cannot use Ohm's law. When we use nodal analysis, we need to assume the direction of the current. The assumption of the direction of the current is decided by you, the one who solves for the circuit. One way to assume the directions of the currents is to specify the direction of the current of the top resistor is the same as I1. That means this current is going into the node VA. Now keep in mind that this is an arbitrarily assumption and the current will branch out to leave the two bottom resistors as shown here. Another assumption is to state that all the currents are leaving the node. Any node you have, just assume that all the currents leave in the node. I personally like the second assumption because I do not have to analyze the circuit. I will blindly assume all the currents are leaving the node, and then I'll be able to use KCL and sum the currents leaving the node. So either assumption is valid. Even though I like the second one, you are free to use either assumption we are going to use both methods just to show you that we can have the same answer. So here is method one. So in method one, we assume that the current through the three kilo ohm resistor is going into VA. This current is equal to five minus VA over three K. And we assume that the other two currents are leaving the node since the current through the 1 kilo ohm resistor is leaving the node, then that is equal to VA minus the negative 5 over 1K. And the current that is leaving VA through the 2 kilo ohm resistor is basically VA minus 0 over 2K. This is the nodal equation, folks. We need to make sure that we have applied the directions of the currents and we have stated the equation for each current correctly. This step is one of the critical steps in solving for the nodal voltage. From now on, the remaining of the problem becomes basic algebra. So we can cancel the 1K. It is a common denominator. We can also multiply by 6 because that is the common denominator. Then the left side of the equation becomes 10 minus 2VA and the right hand side of the equation becomes 6VA plus 30 plus 3VA. So now we can group the VA terms at the left side of the equation and we put the numerical value at the right side of the equation then we have negative 11 VA is equal to 20 or VA is equal to negative 20 over 11 volts. Now let us use method 2 to solve for the nodal voltage. In method 2 I will assume that all the currents are leaving the node. So the current through the 3 kilo ohm resistor is leaving the node and that current is equal to VA minus 5 over 3K. Plus, the current leaving the 1 kilo ohm resistor, 
that is VA minus negative 5 over 1K plus the current leaving the 2 kilo ohm resistor which is VA minus 0 over 2K. Those are the three currents that leave in the node. The sum will equal to 0. Make sure that this equation is applied correctly. The directions of the currents and the signs confirms or satisfies KCL. So again, this is the nodal equation. This is KCL here. The second method is a straightforward approach. I don't have to analyze the circuit. I only sum all the currents leaving the node blindly. And that's one of the reasons I like it. Now we can cancel the 1K term. Then we multiply by 6 because it is the common denominator. So we have 2VA minus 10 plus 6V plus 30 plus 3VA equals 0. So now we group all the VA terms and all the numerical value terms. So we have 11VA plus 20 equals 0. Or we can solve for VA to equal to negative 20 over 11 volts. That is basically negative 1.5. 818 volts. So you can see that using either assumption or either method, we end up with the same answer. You only need one approach or one method to solve for the problem. I like the second method because it is systematic. Let's go back to the problem. Now we know the resistance value and the voltages across it. Then we can solve for the current use in Ohm's law. Since I1 is flowing downward, we can state that I1 is 5 minus VA over 3K. We have already solved for VA. Then this is equal to 5 minus the negative 1.818 over 3K. That is basically equal to 2.273 milliamps. Also, we can solve for I2. I2 is leaving the node as shown here. Then we can state that I2 is equal to VA minus negative 5 over 1K. And again, because we solved for VA, so we can say that this is equal to negative 1.818 minus negative 5 over 1K. That is basically 3.182 milliamps. So in this circuit, when we ask you to solve for voltages and currents, you cannot use Ohm's law because you don't know the voltages and the currents through the resistors. So one of the techniques you do is you use nodal analysis. This circuit has one node. You sum the currents at that node to solve for the nodal voltage. Once the nodal voltage is solved for, then you can solve for the currents of each element in the circuit. So nodal analysis is a very powerful tool. It works for all kinds of circuits. The good news is most electronic circuits have only one node. Occasionally, you will run into circuits where you use two or more nodes. However, most electronic circuits uh, will be one nodal problem.